According to William Paul Thurston, mathematics is not about numbers, equations, computations, or algorithms. It is all about understanding. Good day everybody! I am Christian T. Ventura and in today's video, we will be discussing our two topics which are pyramids and cones. We will also be discussing one problem each from each topic, so sit back and relax because we will now move forward to our topic. Pyramid A pyramid is a solid whose base is a plain polygon and sides are triangles that meet in a common vertex. The triangular sides are called lateral faces. The common vertex is also called apex. A pyramid is named according to the shape of its base. If the base is a triangle, square, hexagon, etc., the pyramid is called as a triangular pyramid, a square pyramid, a hexagonal pyramid, etc., respectively. In terms of altitude or the height, the altitude of a pyramid is the perpendicular distance from the vertex to the base. In terms of the axis, the axis of a pyramid is the distance from the vertex to the center of the base. What is a right or regular pyramid? A pyramid whose base is a regular polygon and congruent isosceles triangles as lateral faces. In a regular pyramid, the axis is perpendicular to the base. Thus, in a regular pyramid, the axis and the altitude or the height are identical. In terms of slant height, the slant height of a regular pyramid is the length of the median through the apex of any lateral face. So let's see this figure 17.1, um, which is the point O and G which is the slant height of the pyramid. So it is denoted by symbol L. The formula for pyramid is volume is equals to 1 over 3 multiplied by the area of the base multiplied by height. So now, let us see this example. The altitude of the Great Pyramid of Chops in Egypt originally was 480 feet and its square base was 764 feet on an edge. It is said to have cost $10 a cubic yard and $3 more for each square yard of lateral surface. What is its cost? So when we are solving a problem, always remember that before answering, let us first identify the givens and then identify what is asked. So if we already have identified the given and the unknown, then we can start continue writing the formula for the pyramid and then substitute the givens to the formula and then solve. So now, we already have our problem. So then, let's identify our given. So our given, we have our height, which is 480 feet, and our base, which is 764 feet. Our cost or for cubic yard is equals to ten dollars and cost for square yard is three dollars so now let us convert our 480 feet and 764 feet into yards so 
So first, for our 480 feet, multiplied by 1 yard is equals to 3 feet. Cancel the same, then multiply. So 480 multiplied by 1 divided by 3 is equals to 160, then copy the remaining symbol which is yards or the remaining unit which is yards next is 764 feet multiplied by 1 yard is equals to 3 feet again cancel the same unit then multiply so it is equals to 254.67 yards so now since we already have converted our um, given into yards so let us now solve for the volume of the pyramid so the equation or the formula for the volume of the pyramid is V is equals to one third area of the base times height so now let us substitute so one third so one third substitute the 254.667 yards 6667 yards squared and the 160 yards which is the height since we already substituted our base and our height to our formula now we are going to solve for the volume so now the volume of the given base and height to the, to the formula the answer will be 3 Four five eight nine three nine point thirty five yards. So next we are going to solve for our lateral surface area since we already have our volume. So for lateral surface area Since if we are looking for perimeter, we are going to multiply the um, base into 4. So the answer will be 1018.6667 yards now let us going to find the area s squared so area is equals to 764 divided by 3 squared so the answer will be 64,855.11 yards squared now let us solve for the slant height. Slant height. So the formula for the slant height is square root of the one half multiplied by base squared plus the height squared. So square root of one half multiplied by base squared add or added by the height squared so now let us substitute our givens to our formula in our slant height so one half square root rather one half substitute our base which is 764 over 3 squared plus 400 80 over 3 
So the answer will be 204.48417 yards. Now, let us solve again for the laterals, for the lateral surface area. So the formula for the lateral surface area is 1 half multiplied by the perimeter slant height plus the area. So 1 half 1018.666667 slant height 204.484 one seven plus our area which is sixty four eight five five point eleven so the answer will be one sixty nine zero zero five point seven hundred forty three square yards so since we already have solved for our lateral surface area, our volume, our slant height, we already converted, also are given. Now we are going to solve for a cost. So our call cost per volume. So ten dollars per cubic yard. So ten dollars multiplied by the volume. So, $10. So, our volume was 3,458,939.35. So, the answer will be 34,500,000. So now we are going to solve for the cost of the area. So the given was $3 per square yard. So $3, $3 multiplied by the area. So $3. So our area was 169,500. 7143. So the answer will be 507.17.1429 dollars. So now let us solve for our total cost. So in solving our total cost, we are just going to add the cost of the volume and the cost of the area so cost total is equals to cost v plus cost a so substitute the given to our formula so 34 million five hundred eighty nine thousand three hundred ninety three point five plus five hundred seven thousand seventeen point one four two nine so the answer will be thirty five million ninety six thousand four hundred ten point sixty four twenty nine so that is the cost the answer to the problem so that's it i hope everyone were able to follow our discussion in our first topic which is pyramid so i hope um, you learned a lot and now we are going to continue to our next topic which is code so now let's move on on our next topic which is cone a cone is a solid generated by a line, one end of which is fixed and the other end describes a closed curve in a plane. The fixed point is called the vertex or apex. 
In terms of axis, the axis of the cone is the distance from the apex to the center of the base. In terms of altitude, it is the perpendicular distance from the apex to the base of the cone. It is also called the height of the cone. In terms of circular cone, a cone whose base is a circle and whose lateral surface tapers uniformly to the apex is called a circular cone. So what is a right circular cone? It is a cone whose base is a circle and whose axis is perpendicular to the base. A right circular cone can also be described when a right triangle is rotated about one of its sides containing the right triangle. In terms of slant height, in a right cone, it is the distance from the vertex to the circumference of the base. It is denoted by symbol letter L. Take note, a cone may also be defined as when the number of sides of the base of a pyramid is increased indefinitely and the magnitude of each side diminished the surface of the pyramid tends to become the surface of a cone. Hence, a cone is a limiting case of a pyramid. So the formula for the cone is volume is equals to one third multiplied by height multiplied by pi and radius squared. So let's see this example. A pile of sand is in the form of a right circular cone of altitude 7 feet and slant height of 26 feet. What is the weight of the sand if the sand weighs 107.5 pounds per cubic feet? Just like what I have mentioned earlier, when you are solving a problem, always identify first the given and the unknown. If you were able to identify the given and unknown, then you can start solving and identify the formula that you are going to use. If you were able to identify the formula, you can now start substitute the, form, the given to the formula and then solve for the answer. So now we already have our problem. So after you analyze the problem, let us now identify the given. So given. First, we have our height, which is 7 feet. Our slant height, which is 26 feet. And our weight, which is 107.5 pounds per cubic feet. So let's um, try to create a cone. So this is the radius, the slant height which is 7, uh, the height rather, or the altitude which is 7 feet, and the slant height which is 26 feet. So the formula that we are going to use for cones is volume is equals to 1 third multiplied by pi r squared times height. So if we are going to look on our formula, we don't have yet our radius. So before we move on, let us first solve and look for our radius. So since we have, so since we don't have rather yet our radius, so we are going to look for our radius. So in finding our radius, we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. So our radius will be the opposite side our height will be the adjacent side and our slant height will be the hypotenuse side so next we are going to transpose 7 squared to the other side on the 26 feet or the 26 squared since we can't add r to 7 so r squared equals to 26 squared minus 7 squared. So when you are transposing, you are also ch changing the sign of the number. So 
from positive it will going to be negative so next we are going to cancel out the squared of the radius since we are only looking for the radius that will going to be r is equals to square root of 26 squared minus 7 squared so now let us solve so r is equals to the square root of 600 627 so the square root of 627 is 25.03 feet so now we have our radius which is 25.03 feet okay so since we already find or found our radius we can now um, start solving for our volume so volume is one third multiplied by pi which is 3.14 and our radius which is 25.03 feet so in my case i will not be including 0 0.03 i will be making my radius as a whole number so i'm going to use only 25 then squared and 7 multiplied by 7 so now the answer for the volume will be 4,533 feet cubed. Okay, so this is not yet the answer since we are looking for the weight of the sand. If the sand weighs 107.5 um, pounds per cubic feet. So in finding the weight, let us multiply 4,533 to 107.5 uh, rather in order to find the weight of the sand so the answer is going to be 487,299.5 pounds so that will be the answer so that is the weight of the sand if the sand weighs 105 107.5 pounds per cubic feet so that concludes our today's topic i hope everyone were able to learn a lot in this video so until next time bye